Hi everyone. In this video, I'd like to walk through Activity 6-3, titled Configuring a Radius Server. This is from the MCSE slash MCSA Guide to Microsoft Windows Server 2012 Administration in preparation of Exam 70-411. In my edition of the book, this activity begins at the top of page 221. Um, before we begin the activity, however, there is a little bit of setup that we need to do. Um, we need to prep our servers and configure them um, to enable a radius type connection. Um, so we have two servers. I'm doing this on both virtual servers. And so on server one here, we need to go ahead and add the network policy server role. Let me dig down in here to find that for you. Right here. So we need to add this role, network policy and access services, network policy server specifically. Um, I went ahead and installed all the defaults, so it's not going to show me that since it's already installed. Um, but if you're installing it, just stick with the defaults. Um, and then the next thing that we need to do is to configure a VPN server to test radius. So I'm going to use my secondary server for that. And in here we needed to add an additional role. and it's the routing and remote access role. So if we come in, we have remote access installed. And so we want to go ahead and open up that MMC to get started. And we want to go ahead and start configuring. We are doing this as a VPN. And here you want to select the network interface that connects this server to the internet. On this server, um, I have a second NIC that is simulating an internet connection even though I'm not actually connected to the internet on it. Um, so the first interface is actually connected to my local network, um, which in this case is a domain network. And then my secondary connects directly to the internet. So we select the one connecting to the internet. Um, you can do this automatically with DHCP. If you don't want to use DHCP, then the server will generate. Or you can specify right here um, which IP address is to use. I'm going to go ahead and leave it automatically by default. And here we can choose to set it up to work with Radius. Um, I'm not going to configure that yet. We're going to stick with the default using routing and remote access to authenticate. Let it finish that configuration. We should receive a couple of warnings. Um, the first here is DHCP uh, must be configured with a DHCP relay agent that will point to the DHCP server. You may also get another one saying, depending on how you're configuring this, you may get a different warning or another warning that states it can't authenticate with Active Directory or can't integrate directly with Active Directory. Um, that requires a little bit of additional configuration that I'm not going to go into. Um, so that takes care of most of the setup. Now we're actually going to configure the Radius server to enable these connections. So we're back on server 1, the primary server, that has the network policy server role. We're going to select a Radius server for dial-up or VPN, and then configure dial-up or VPN. We're going to specify VPN. Um, it'll automatically populate this. You can modify this with whatever text you want in here. I'm going to leave it as default. Um, next thing we need to do is add Radius clients. We're going to point this over to our other server. And 
and as I'm on a domain environment, I'll also give it the domain. For IP address or DNS, if you have a static IP address for your server, then you're probably fine just to go ahead and give it the IP address directly and resolve it, and it should resolve just fine. If you do not have static IP addresses set and you're and you trust that your DNS entries will always be up to date, you can try to do it by DNS or by name. Um, I don't have DNS configured very well for this. So for mine, I am going to go ahead and use the IP address. Um, I don't have any templates for the secrets, so we're not going to worry about that yet. We're going to create one here. I'm keeping mine fairly simple. Um, I believe it's recommended to make that fairly difficult. You're not going to be using it constantly. This is really just to kind of set up security between the two servers. Um, I think Microsoft usually recommends a password that's at least like 22 characters. Um, it should be a random mix of upper and lower case letters, numbers, and symbols. So it should be a fairly complex password. Alright, so we've set up one radius client. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave this on the default. This is MSChap2. Um, it's the newer version of MSChap. Um, these are fairly strong security protocols in that the password's encrypted and it's a one-way encryption. Um, so if your environment will support it, I would recommend using Chap V2, MS Chap V2. Um, here we can specify user groups, Active Directory user groups that the policy will affect. So you can limit it to only specific people that are allowed to um, use this type of VPN through your radius. Um, as it mentions here, if we don't specify any specific groups, then it'll just apply to all of our Active Directory users. So I'm going to leave that empty, so it'll apply to everyone. Um, here we can configure the IPv4 and IPv6 packet filters. This will allow us to kind of control and restrict the network traffic that is sent and received. Um, I'm not worried about filtering this right now, so I'm going to leave it as defaults. You may want to configure this a little bit, depending on your environment. And our encryption settings will allow us to specify um, minimum encryption levels. Um, so obviously, if you're in a real environment and you only want the strongest encryption, you would simply clear these two and it would force it to only encrypt with 128-bit encryption. Um, for this test environment, I'll let it just kind of automatically pick whatever will work for it. Um, realm name. I haven't used this at all yet. Um, Looks like it's kind of focused on the ISP side, so I'm definitely not going to get into that in this video. So I'll just leave it as defaults, where it'll remove realm names. We'll continue on. Um, it'll give us a little preview of the settings that we've selected, some of the settings at least. You can view the full configuration details here. I'm just going to go ahead and let it finish. And now the next thing that we want to do is to configure um, routing and remote access to use RADIUS authentication. So we're going to hop back over to server 2. And in routing and remote access, we're going to open up the property box for server 2 here. We want to select the security tab, and instead of using Windows authentication, we want to use RADIUS authentication. And of course we'll need to configure it. And we're going to add in 
server 1, which we just configured for this. And here's that secret that we created, the one I kept simple, but that Microsoft recommends making fairly complex. I'm going to leave all of these as defaults. And then, once that finishes configuring, we want to do the same thing for the accounting provider. Again, leaving the other defaults, let it configure that. All right, and briefly, I just want to look through these. Um, so this is that addressing again, where we can we can specify a range of addresses, or we can allow DHCP to handle it. Um, you can do some configuration with IPv6. Um, if you're not familiar with IPv6, you may want to get help with that, or not worry about configuring it and rely on IPv4. Um, IPv6 will be a lot more robust and, in some ways, quite a bit more secure. But again, it really depends on your network and your environment. Um, IKEv2, this is again some security. And I don't think I'm worried about the rest of the configurations there. Once this finishes storing the configuration, we're going to restart the uh, routing and remote access services, which we can do right here once this is finished. There we go. So we'll right click on our server node go to all tasks and tell it to restart. Since we've changed some configurations, I want to make sure it's actually using those. All right, and then we're done here. But quickly, I am going to grab the IP address to make sure I know what my address is, because now we're going to create that VPN connection from server 1 to server 2. So we can close these. We'll want to create a new connection as a VPN connection. And here's where that address comes into play. 1-3. So it's been built, now we need to try logging in. All right, and we get the error that EAP required um, from this machine is not in installed or enabled. Don't freak out if you see this error. We go to our adapter settings, go to the properties for our VPN connection, under security, we will enable EAP. Now let's try the connection again. And we see error 691. Username and password combination is not recognized or the selected authentication protocol is not permitted. And again, this isn't huge cause for concern. We will just come back into our properties and we'll improve our security up to use MS Chat V2. And let's try again. And there we are, connected. 
looks like that's everything for this activity. Um, we did not cover setting up a radius proxy or multiple radius servers. Um, with any luck, I'll be able to create a video on that sometime soon. Um, but as far as this video goes, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, um, or concerns, please feel free to leave them for me below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.